I want to say a very special namaste to one and all. And thank you guys for listening. Like Josh said, it's Friday. I didn't even realize it's Friday, Josh. So let's get kicking. Um, Joshua, two things define an individual, a person. Your patience when you had nothing and your attitude when you have everything. You hear what I said there? Two things define the human. Their patience when they had nothing and their attitude when they have everything. Guys, our Vice President Jagdeer returned from India last week. Very quietly, Joshua. 90% of this country didn't even know when he left or what he left to go to India for. <laughs> you know what he did when he left? All right. Before he left, Joshua, the government had put out a statement saying that Jagdeer will lead a technical team to that country for oil and gas discussion and trade deals. The statement also said he will also negotiate the oil price with India to buy our share of the oil, among other things. When he came back, he didn't even have the decency or use the word courtesy to hold a press conference with all the media to inform the country about that trip as to what was discussed or what he achieved for Guyana during his visit, Josh. Guess what he did, Joshua? Instead of holding a press conference, he went and sit down for 63 minutes with Guyana's biggest clown, the critic, to cuss and abuse out Glenn Lal. And said, not a single word about his trip to India. Uncle and auntie is out my mouth. So, cause, cousin, cousin, out of that one hour, three minutes, Listen this carefully. 48 minutes was about Glenn Lal. I will play him piece by piece for you guys. To hear how he called me a madman. Because I am calling for our fair share of our wealth in this country. Something which he himself, the now president and their parties while in opposition promised to get out of that lopsided Exxon contract. Hear that? Guys, I must tell you these programs and the TikToks I am doing is exposing them so much that it is getting under their skin. And the more I expose their forked tongues, you know the two, the two faces, them getting more and more angry as the days go by. But let me be very blunt tonight. Jack Dale's approval or disapproval of what I do or what I say is not going to keep me back from my purpose in life. You hear what I said there, Joshua? Sorry, sir. You don't have that power. That power only rests with my creator, our creator. <laughs> These guys, when you listen to them and see how they are selling out, all of us, they are more angry than us. They are more angry than we, the Guyanese people who get shafted every day. Yes, Josh. We can't ask them anything or say anything about what's happening with our wealth in this country 
They are more offended, brother. Yes. They are more offended than offended itself. <laughs> this nation is in the dark on everything. And instead they address the real issues. We sitting with. He is going around. Sitting down with a joker to cost Glenn Lal. <laughs> that is what he got time to do. You will hear. Guys. From the minute the program start Joshua. Only Glenn Lal they were talking about. I swear to my creator. I did not listen to him. I just asked my staff to listen and cut out what they feel I should respond to. Cousin, I will play him so we all can listen. So you can be the judge whether, whether he is a madman or I am a madman. Who is really misleading the nation or who going crazy? I want you to listen carefully how he is slowly picking and choosing his words to respond to questions. Questions, I believe, Joshua, were handed to that clung for him to ask. <laughs> Could you play the first tape? Yes. You know? And you guys will decide what is facts from fiction, what is truth, and what is lies. Play that for me, please. A lot of Guyanese citizens are confused as a result of the misinformation <coughs> being spewed um, by the Starbrook News. Kaicho News takes the lead on that. Yeah. Obviously, after a number of years, it is becoming evident that um, Mr. Glenlal has an agenda. How can government um, in the best interests of educating the populace, mm -hmm. counter these kind of issues and bring clarity to the citizenry. So, transparency is an important issue, and I think that any government should ensure that the organizations that promote transparency. Um, and that could include, when I say organizations, I mean the, the opposition, members of the media, the NGOs, etc. that they're healthy and you have a, a robust um, in, intervention on their part to ensure that government remains vigilant and that they follow the rules. So a healthy society will have these bodies. But in Guyana's case, what we have is a series of organizations and media houses that are not interested in transparency, although they profess themselves to be very much interested in, in transparency and that they are the champions of transparency. I will not put the Starbuck News in the same category as Kaicho News. Starbuck News tends to be more reasoned and even when occasionally we disagree with, with them they, um, on, on articles, etc. We I don't see it as a campaign of misinformation. And often their articles are based me on what people say to them, which could be misleading, but it's our job to respond and correct that. They don't fabricate the stories the same way like Kaicho News would do. Kaicho News has been built on sensationalism and fabrication. You can sensationalize the news and that's fine because people have to sell newspapers, you have to make money. But when you, you 
you start fabricating, making up the news, misleading people, then there is, no matter how much a government tries to address your concerns, and we have reached, we've gone overboard in trying to address the real issues that sometimes the Kaichou News will bring to our attention. But they, they're not interested in answers. They're more interested in making up stories. And so we see uh, a, you, a, a big pattern of this. And the last few weeks have been an example of how the, this has manifested it, itself in the, in the country. It's very hard for a government to address a madman sometimes. You know, somebody who, like the, the Kaicho News publisher, It's, he's so ignorant of many of the technical issues. But the sad thing is that he's not aware that he's ignorant. He, that he doesn't know. And the worst thing could, in this world is when a person believes that he knows the, what he's talking about, but he has no clue. For the whole country, he be, it becomes like a joke, but for him and a few people who believe in conspiracy theories, this works for them. That, it's, it's, it's very hard to address, address that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, Joshua. We make up stories, uncle, auntie. Is why you are listening to this man. Hmm? Is why 50, 60, 70,000 people listen to Glenn, Glenn Lal TikToks on a daily basis? Is why this whole country listening to Glenn Lal program, man? I hear the vice president says his makeup story. The Kaijo News just fabricate story. <laughs> and are you still listening to this radio station? Are you please go and turn to the radio stations? That he buy out the people them to promote them kind of lawlessness and nonsense he talking there. Are you going to listen to them thing there? Listen how to cost down PPP and cost out PPP, PNC. That's what those stations and them other media houses does do. Let me tell you, he just bring in the Starbrook News. It's not Starbrook News, he want to talk about that, you know. They're just forcing the Starbrook News into the question for make it look like Star, what is Glenn Lal and Kaicho News. You hear Jack, they didn't call my name. Yep. <laughs> you heard him, you heard him cause accusing me of being a madman. And the media is making up stories. And how it's very difficult for a government to deal with a madman. <laughs> cause from the time the vice president opened his mouth, he talked about how important transparency is. You heard him there for yourselves, guys. Transparency. And how Kaicho News, misleading. Yes, misleading. Information on, we are, we are misleading. We are on, I should, say, I should say we are on a misleading campaign pretending to be champions of transparency and how government, how government go about with people's business. <laughs> the man said how we does sensationalize and make up stories for rile up the nation against the oil people. You hear that, Joshua? Yes. You hear that? You guys believe what you heard there just now? From the ex-president of this country, now the vice president in charge of the oil sector? This man got any shame? He got the gall and the belly for talk about transparency and misleading this whole nation every day with their silence? You believe this? And whenever they do talk, Josh, uh -huh. 
You can't trust a word that comes out their mouth. If I am misleading or the newspaper is misleading, uncle, auntie, is how come I ain't getting no lawsuits? Hmm? Or why they're not putting out a statement in their own media houses to rebut what the Kaicho News or Glenn Lal is saying on these programs? A couple quick questions for you guys. Anyone, you know how much we're paying on interest alone for that 40 billion Exxon said I spent out there to date? Isn't that a legitimate question? Every person in this country should know the answer to. Guys, after all, is we oil. You guys remember the president himself promised a bobbition how he got all the answers for Glenn Lal? But I want to know. How many times did I ask that question on this program and on the radio? Did we ever get an answer? Is that transparency talked about? Or is this or was that misleading information? I don't know. I could tell you this. A 10% interest rate on that 40 billion US dollar cause, Guyana is paying 4 billion US a year. Coming out from our oil for interest alone. And how much Guyana get in a year, Joshua, you know? Just over one billion dollar, Joshua. Why is that question not being answered? Is this transparency, Mr. Jagdale? Or is this ducking and hiding? Hmm? Cousin, Jack Dave did an audit on the 960 million ExxonMobil said they spend searching for oil. That audit completed. But guess what? He ducking and hiding it from the Guyanese people. Is that transparency, Mr. Jack Dale? Let me ask you guys. Anybody ever see or hear anything? What the audit uncovered during the investigation? Jack Dale hadn't said a word. But guess what, guys? To this day, we don't know how much Exxon can we on that one bill alone. And on top of that, the country had to fork out US dollars, a big chunk. To pay for the added too. <laughs> Why is Jack Dale hiding the findings of that audit that we pay for Josh? Is this transparency? I'm just asking. Six times I have asked him for the gold contracts. To be released so that the people of this country can see the size of shaft they're getting from those foreigners in our gold diamond and diamond fields. He pushed me around and the media, like if he playing bumper ball, not releasing them. Is Heidi hiding it from us? Ask yourselves why. Is he getting something personally out of these deals? I am just asking. Is asking for these things misinformation or sensationalism? You be the judge, guys. Ask Jack Dale and the press and President Ali to respond to the thousands of questions I have been asking on these programs. Ask them. As a matter of fact, when last I hear anything out of their mouths on this US trillion dollar oil sector, other than we have said enough, we're not renegotiating it. Is that transparency, cousin? 
I don't know where this country is heading with these types of leaders. But I will tell you guys one thing for sure. Guyana faces the greatest danger it has ever faced in the history of this country. When Guyana's vice president can swing around, everything that they are not doing to protect and safeguard this country and then blame Glenn Lal and the media for just asking simple questions or for exposing their underwear, then you people are in the greatest of danger. That's all I can say. To say Kaicho News and Stabrook News are, are misleading the nation and calling me a madman. Let me repeat. Let me repeat what a wise man once said. The most beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing in God's creation is an educated person. Not an educated fool. A smart person fights with passion. A fool becomes his own slave. Anyone who makes you angry will become your master. <laughs> well, it looked like I have become his master because everything I say and do gets him angry and very angry too. Josh, could you play a second piece of the tape? Thank you. They want the gas to energy project. Not they want the documents. So I recall in our history, I just confirmed from Ashni because I was out. I said to Donna Ramitar, I said, don't give these people anything. They were not, they would kill the project at the end. They had great goodwill and Ashni and stuff. They met with them several times in the cabinet here with a team from the opposition. Gave stacks over 3,000 pages of documents on their mileage fault from feasibility study to hydrology studies to environmental studies, design, costs, everything, contracts. They didn't use it to support the project. They saw it. I doubt many, any, any of them read the documents because they don't read the documents. And, and then they killed it. So they want they succeeded in that because they knew if a miler had taken off by 2017, we would have had cheaper power. It would have been a kudos for the PPP. They were worried that this gas to energy project would result in electricity prices being cut by 50% by, 20, by 2024, 2025. And we'd have enough cooking gas to export cheap cooking gas. That's a big political impact. It meant we fulfilled the promise we made to people. Cutting cost of living, uh, cutting their electricity bill, reliable power. They want to kill it. It's the same thing. They don't want documents to support or to be edified, to learn, to be educated. They don't want to kill it. They want to kill it. So we're not falling into any stupid trap again. With these people, if you negative about everything but you can only expect this from people who never had any plan for anything they could have built the pipeline they could have identified the site they could have done a number of things could have built Joshua the man you just listened to is an international gaff man and a con man <laughs> you know if you really doesn't know he know him you hear me? You fall for everything this man tells you. Guys, he said what he said. He, he, he tell Ramatar, don't give. You see? So he was in control. But I still went and give the documents. 
because Jagde want to this day can export rice and sugar. What is whole generation barn and growing? But now he gonna export what? Gas? <laughs> yeah. He gonna export gas. Is this guy for real? Hmm? The Amelia Falls project he talked about. Let me add some color and context to that. Since 2007, when he was president, he wanted to shove it down with throat at a cost five times the world price. <laughs> and when Glenn Lal exposed that, them run and left it. When that project started, Joshua, Jack Dale first tell the nation it was going to cost 350 million US. Then suddenly it moved to 450 million US. Within weeks, it jumped to 600 million. Then to 850 million US within a few months. All this information is in black and white. You guys just have to go, just have to Google Kaicho News. It's there. I never forget going to New York one morning and the vice president of the same company that was supposed to build the Hydro Falls was in the line. Yes, was in the line at Trinidad when we were changing planes. <laughs> We chat a little, I tell him, I, I'm a guy and he's living in Canada. And I saw you guys, um, didn't I see, isn't this your photograph in the newspaper? I had the Kaichonos in my hand. And his face was on the story. And he said, yes. I said, man, I really love that, pro that project you guys putting down in Guyana. And we began to chat. Joshua? Mm -hmm. The man tell me, you know, if you guys don't hurry up, you know. It's going to go past 1.2 billion right there and then, right? And then he moved on, and I said, listen, we'll chat in the plane. When I move in the plane, and I go sit in the plane, when I look around in the first class, he wasn't there. So I, for a moment, I thought the man lose. You know, I thought he'd lose, lose the flight. And something tells me, go check at the back of the plane. I walk down the whole back and check he wasn't there. But while going, I see somebody pulling a blanket over his head. <laughs> right? The head. So I walk back and then I go back again. You know, it was, it was that, that guy hiding from me. Yes. Yeah, he was hiding from me in the plane. <laughs> Big billionaire <coughs> coming to do a project flying economy. Hmm. By now, guys, by now, 1.2 billion US and more would have been hanging around my neck like a hangman's noose had that project gone through then. Mm -hmm. The cost per megawatt around the world for projects like these was less than $1 million, brother, at the time. But Jack Day was telling us we are going, we are going to pay five times that price. <laughs> yeah, since back then, those days, he started to get angry with Glenn Lal because I exposing them raw rank. Yes. They didn't get through with that project 16 years ago. Now they're trying to bring it back. President Ali just announced again they're bringing back the project. This time cheaper. This time the price themselves went, went down. To 700 million. <laughs> For the same 165 megawatt. You guys know of anything in this world that the price has dropped? Huh? This is the same Jack Dale. The same game Jack Dale has been playing all along. It's control. They want to, to be in control. Of all the money-making business in this land, Uncle. Brazington, they say, is a Chinese company.
coming to build, own, and operate it. And how Guyana got no risk. And while you were speaking at the conference, I did that program already. The screen behind him was exposing all the dangers Guyana faces with that project. A matter of fact, seven out of the ten most dangerous risks on that project would have fallen Guyana. Man, the thing include earthquake or a hurricane. If an earthquake or hurricane disappear with the project, we the poor people of this country had to find money for pay the, the private people all the money they said they spent on the project. Ever hear anything like that, Judge Joshua? <laughs> <laughs> huh? You see the binding them chap binding you wrong with? Yeah. Not you, they're binding a country to. You know when you expose that? It gets them angry. Mm -hmm. That's like a man buying a car. You know, for care you pick, to school. And if an earthquake happened while he's driving the car, coming for you, child, a road bus when the car disappear, you family got pay for the car. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I want to tell them if any hurricane, or any earthquake should take the hydro. It was happen when them they wrong it. <laughs> and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's too much they're doing to this country, cousin. Come on. Come on. Where and when will this end? When you guys will stop this wholesale criminality? With every big money project in this country. Hmm? Playing with the poor people's minds in this country. Promising them cheap electricity. Come on, man. Are you going to stop this thing? Hmm? When this thing is going to stop, Joshua? When is enough? Enough for, for, for these guys. I remember Jack Dale... Promised to give out one laptop per family. You guys remember it? It was a beautiful gesture. I was happy with it. Until I find out the real crookery behind it. I put my reporter to ask the minister in parliament. Uh, the price for one of them. And when she told him 1500 US. <laughs> I nearly dropped dead. When that story was reported, uncle, when it hit the front page, Kaicho News, they run out and say, no, 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 no. She made a mistake. It's 350 US we paying for each laptop. When I check around the world on the prices for laptops at the time, cousin, Peru, was giving the, all their citizens laptop at 50 US dollars each. India was giving out millions of laptop to their citizens in India at a cost of 35 US dollars each. Guyana Jagdeo laptop was costing me 350 US each. And when Glenn Lal reported that, they put out a statement saying Glenn Lal don't want poor people to get a laptop. He even sent the state media to interview people in the streets to make Glenn Lal and the Kaicho News look bad. How we don't want them children to have laptops. Only my children must have, have because I am rich. Guys, Everything is in black and white, what I'm saying here. You just got to Google it in Kaicho News. All those stories are glaring there. Scampishness, crookishness, skullduggery can never come out these people's brains. That's all they think about. 
And that's all they live for. I don't even want to go to President Ali Bakrung when he was Minister of Housing. Man, he used to run the ministry, the, the ministry accounts department, the money department, with lead pencil. Google that story, you're going to see it. When they lose the election, them own staff in there catch them and call me, call me. Come quick, come quick to see. They're packing up all the records in the vehicle for the born. That same Leonard Gillary, what on one of them out piece now, was the one who shot down there and chased down the vehicle. Man, Gildari said it was like a police and thief chase around the city and on the East Bank. In and out the streets. Fly past the Demerara Harbor Bridge. Turn into Parkview Hotel and turn out back. Head back, heading back to Georgetown. Gildari behind them. Then they shot over the Demerara Harbor Bridge with all the documents. Gillary said he didn't want to go over the river, so he come back to the office. <laughs> oh, beautiful Guyana this is, man. Jack Day went on and on about that hydro seed project and say how he gave the PNC 3,000 pages of documents. And how they turn around and use, use it to kill the project. He know very well. It's not the PNC kill the project. It's the information that me and my team expose that kill the project. But like shame to call Glenn Lal name. Or say Glenn Lal kill it. <laughs> oh... Mr. Transparency himself. Now saying, now saying, don't give nobody doc no document. We can kill the project. You sure is kill the project or kill somebody's pocket? I'm just asking. You know, I like ask question, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Kill project is killing people's pocket. Guyana don't start spending the oil money on what is now the biggest project ever in Guyana. And you heard him just now. He's not releasing any documents. They don't want to fall in that trap again for anybody kill the project. He's killing the kickback. Or killing somebody pockets. <laughs> oh boy, I swear to God, they better stay in there for life. And the and the coalition remain the same at the same place. And we don't ever get a com a complete change in this land. Away from the PPP PNC and the AFC. Because a lot of people will spend their remaining lives behind bars. They think they can continue doing as they like for as long as they like. Forgetting that with today's technology, you can't hide nothing, Mr. Jagdeo. It's going to come to light. Everything you guys did came to light. Uncle and auntie. Brothers and sisters, y'all really understand what Jack Deo really said there just now? The man admit that when they released the Amelia documents, that was when the truth really started coming out. So now, this time around, he don't say, don't give them nothing. And that is what he calling transparency. Yes, 
He coming clean to the nation. Man, this guy is the star. So much mix up story. One after the other. I won't believe is forget. He forget what happened with the Amelia project. After all, guys, this is the vice president. He don't tell lies. <laughs> it's only Glenn Lawless tell lies. The World Bank, the IMF, the IDB, Commonwealth, and all them other international experts that tell lies. Not me, Vice President. He's an honest. Yes, he's an honest, brilliant, and decent citizen. <laughs> Let's continue, man. Let's continue. He and President Alito told all Guyana when they were in opposition how they will review and renegotiate that exam contract. Today, them singing a different tune. Them singing, them singing the, op the opposite to that and trying to pull wool over the eyes, talking about changing contracts and more royalties from the new oil blocks with nothing inside. That's what they're talking about now. These people can be trusted with your future? I'm just asking. Hoping, skipping and jumping around the place, trying to defend the things they do. He ain't realized he raising an ant's nest and put his foot in him out when he trying to defend things like the Marriott Hotel. The Barbies Bridge, and so on. Listen to him yourself. Listen, play that, play, play that little piece. Um, Glenn Lal once started a campaign with against the Marriott. Now the Marriott is one of the most successful hotels. A campaign was started. Um, in most cases, anything. It, it seems that Glenn Lal is anti-development. So. It creates a frustration in the society that people are trying to figure a way out. A lot of times, um, you know, it's seen, it's clear as day what the government has done as it relates to minimizing the effects of the, the global inflation on our society. But because of these cries, because of the fact that government, as a matter of fact, is the biggest advertiser in Kaicho News, the biggest funder of Kaicho News, you know. One has to ask, when will it stop? Because it creates frustration. It might be yeah. even creating but it will, it, it will never stop. This guy is, has a mental problem, serious mental problem. And uh, he believes he is a messiah, but he, he lives in a cesspool. So the same issues you mentioned, uh, he, he destroyed the livelihoods of many of the people in Region 10 who relied on that company to buy wood for them, the forest, the small forestry operators there. He then had a big beef with Russell, that Russell was sitting on a gold mine. They had all these concessions from the government and that they will never walk away from the country. The people walked away from the country. We lost nearly 900 jobs in the Kokwani, Aichuni area, the Linden Corridor again. I was on his show. I said to him, what's your problem with giving concessions to companies that operate in these areas? If you think it's a gold mine, we will give you every bit of concession that Russell got, and more if you ask for, more. You create 900 jobs there, and we'll give you everything you want. What was up to today, he hasn't responded to that. He has not, but that was a gold mine. Destroy the livelihoods of people in that area. You mentioned about the things he was opposed to. He's opposed to the Barbies Bridge. He's opposed to the convention center. He was opposed to the stadium. The Marriott, he said, was, uh, was owned by Jack Dale and that it will be a white elephant. Can you imagine the duplicity 
of this guy. When a couple of months ago, he said the government wants to sell out a cash cow, the Marriott he's talking about. The same Marriott that a few years back he was saying was a, a, gonna be a white elephant. So because nobody holds him to, uh, to account, nobody holds the newspapers to account. Hmm. Whew, let's deal with the Marriott first. There was an ad in the newspaper three, two, about four, five weeks now. They're, they're going to sell it. Not Glenn saying that. Government put out an ad. We'll deal with that just now. He said, I am a messiah. I'm so happy that you recognize the role I play in this country. Because a messiah is a teacher, an educator. And he's upset that I'm educating you people as to the tricks and games they're playing with you, the Guyanese people, and your monies. <laughs> he should tell us who he, Ashni Singh and Winston Brasington, installed secretly through the Republic Bank Trinidad into the Marriott Hotel, collecting the fat, fat cash for the two, for the two cents they put in. That's what he should tell us. When is the Guyanese tax dollars fund the hag? Put the hag of the money to build a Marriott. Guys, let me remind you. When that hotel opened, built by Jack Dale, it was not even making money to pay the light bills. That's honest truth. Google it. Much less make a profit. But guess what? The secret investors they put in through the bank had to be paid every month. You know where the money was coming from to pay them, uncle? The treasury, our bank of Guyana. And that's how they designed it to rape me and you and this entire nation. Whether the, whether the project was making money or not, they were supposed to be collecting a fat check. And they called Ashni Singh to invest a thousand US dollars in the hotel when they said they're looking for investors for building a new hotel. I even texted Ramatar at the time, president, and tell him to ensure my name is there with just 1,000 US dollars. You don't want to hear what Ashni Singh tell me. All I wanted to do, Uncle and Auntie, was to get a foot into the deal to see the books and to see how they were designing it and to know who were the other players inside. But they never respond to me. And Ashni Singh said, Glenn Lal, you know about newspaper. What you want to come into, into hotel business for? We're looking for people who got hotel knowledge. So that them can help to manage and run the hotel to make money. Today they got anybody? Today they got the Marriott people running the hotel. But they didn't want Glenn Lal in there to see anything. I told you guys, the PNC go in and make contact with the bank, Republic Bank Trinidad, to sit down with the investors, the private people. <laughs> but the bank told them, no, no, uh -uh. We don't give out private information. That's how the PNC told them we can't pay your clients and took over the loan. Yes, and kicked them out because it was a burden on the state, on the Ministry of Finance to pay them every month. Jack Dale didn't tell the nation that the hotel cost over 80 million US. And still incomplete. <laughs> Where a hotel of that size could have been built for less than 25 million. Mm -mm. Every Guyanese should thank God Almighty that oil fine in this country. And the hotel began to make little money now. 
<laughs> now they want to put it up for sale. You see all these things you guys don't know. But I have them at my fingertips. Is whose hands they want to throw it in now. Y'all better check and see if it ain't done sell out quietly. Mm -hmm. And see who hands it gone in. I just asking for y'all to check because it's up for sale. This is the love these guys have for y'all pockets. And transparency them just practice. This is the love and this is transparency that is practice. Ducking every piece of information you ask for. You know why he's so upset and angry with Glenn Lal? Because I am the only one who's exposing their devious and conniving ways. The Barbies Bridge. No different from the Marriott Hotel. Guyana put the bulk of the money. Me and you money. Me and you money. And Jack Dave install private people to reap the hag of the profits. <laughs> Jack Dave's best friend, Ram Roop, was the single largest private shareholder in the bridge. Don't know if he still is. I think he still is. That's how Jack Dave structured the deal. The private people money guarantee and must be paid first. Even if they got to take the old people pension package. Yes. Even if they got to shorten the salaries of the nation. There, those, those guys got to get a monthly payment. Yes, it still remains the same way until this day. These are the things they don't want me to talk. Squeeze the heck out of the Barbies people. Force them to use that bridge. Force them to pay $2,000 plus to cross with a car. The highest toll being paid on any bridge across this world, anywhere. I've been to San Francisco once, spent seven days. And I used to cross... A bridge called the San Mateo Bridge. Eight and a quarter mile long. Uncle, four dollars I pay every day for drive over and drive back. <laughs> Let me give you a little more. Just like the Marriott Hotel. Not making money to pay the light bill. The first few years the Barbies Bridge was not making enough money to pay everybody. You know where the money was coming from to pay the private owners or the private investors? We pockets. Yes, through the treasury. And Jack Dave calling that love for Guyanese people. Giving them Barbie's bridge. It's love for the people, yes. But more love for his friends. <laughs> oh, sweet snitching private people who put in a few dollars and both entities working to pay them. You guys remember, man. He stopped, he stopped the speedboats from carrying school children across the Barbies River. Forcing them to use the Barbies Bridge. He stopped the ferry from fetching vehicles so that he friends can make money. Young people don't know. And some of y'all older folks already forget these things. This is why he can sit down with a madman to call me a madman. <laughs> You guys should ask Jack Dale to make public how much money the, the secret players in the Marriott Hotel already collected. He should also release how much the private owners already collected out of the Barbies Bridge. 
is not transparency, Mr. Jagdeo? Or am I still a madman to ask those questions? I am a madman to expose how as soon as he go in office, he snatch away GPC from Guyana that was making money and hand it over to his best friend Ramru for next to nothing. Turn back. Turn back, uncle. And was paying him hundreds of millions in rent to store the Ministry of Health Drugs. <laughs> the amount of money must have already paid to rent back the building is more than what you get for the whole property and business altogether. <laughs> that is what you should tell her, your man. I am a madman to expose. He sell out the whole Sanata complex worth over 40 million US to the same best friend for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. I am a madman to expose his best friend was going to grab up the whole border cricket ground for next to nothing. <laughs> Hadn't that let letter leak to me that I exposed in the Kaicho news, that would have gone too in the hands of his, to, of his friend. <laughs> I am a madman when I expose to the nation how he took prime ocean view property at Ogle for himself and his friends, uncle, at $114 per square foot. You hear me? Ocean view property where he built the mansion. He pay 100, he and his friends then pay $114 square foot. While the ordinary Guyanese, the brown, black, and proper people of this country had to pay 300 plus for them cane field land, them swamp lands to build them houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Glen Lal is starting a campaign to stop investments and developments. Investments for only private people and personal friends to make money, uncle. Yes. Just name one development this country has seen for the last 30 years that any one of y'all can be proud of. There isn't a single one. Ask Barra Jagdale to answer that question. And the clung he sit down with. Name one. You know, that same clung was hungry. He himself said publicly on his program how Glenn Lal is such a nice man. He couldn't even buy coffee in the morning. He had to come to work early at the Kaicho News to drink a cup of tea and use Wi Fi. That's how bad he was. Today, guess what, cousin? That same clung eating well. Jack Dale. Jack Dale and he should tell all of us how many million dollar contracts he don't get from the government. If you all don't know, critic, the man is a contractor now and a road builder overnight. You all ever hear about that? Yeah. A man who couldn't buy a cup of coffee yesterday overnight is a big contractor in Guyana. God, come quick, please. Come quick and help this nation from these devils we have to put up with. Please. He said Glenn Lal has a mental problem and a serious one too. <laughs> Is who really mental cause? Me or them? He said, me destroy the livelihood of the people in Region 10 who used to cut and sell timber. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to Rusal, the bauxite company, and said how the Rusal people pack up and go away. They should have packed up. All of them should pack up and get out because we're not getting nothing. 
The people in Linden were living without jobs and they're going to continue living without that pittance they used to get. While the billions going out of the country of our wealth and our resources. And I will say this clear. If foreigners can't give us our rightful share, get out. We have never starved in this land. Isle, isle or no isle, goal or no goal, we have enough. And we are self-sufficient, Mr. Jagdale. But you want to bring up these things to rile up. It's not going to work, Jack Dale. When you talk about Bai Shenlin, is Bai Shenlin he was talking about the people selling wood. Yes. He is the one that installed Bai Shenlin secretly in this country, eating up the whole forest with the most expensive decorated wood Guyana has. Our Wamara. Yes. Our Wamara. The most beautiful wood. My office have it. That is what Bai Shenling shipping out by the boatloads and shiploads daily. What Guyana used to get out get from it? Absolutely nothing. But the little penny they used to pay the region ten people to cut it for them. This is the man that you put in control of your all wealth, Barajag Deal. Talking about putting a couple people out of jobs while your country is being emptied. Emptied. Getting nothing out of it. Is the exact thing going on there with oh my and all the gold companies in there. Giving a wee brother and sister a one little security job. Fetching out the wealth of this country. And I'll lay it silent. You guys see the trouble this country in with these empty-headed and corrupt leaders? Huh? You want to hear more, Josh? Huh? By Shen Lin, I don't know if Mr. Su was involved in that deal. What I know, Joshua, Su is in Guyana at the Marriott Hotel every night. Drinking, knocking glass. Yeah, man. Drinking fine wine. By the way, Jack David say he's looking for Sue. And how he got Sue Sue? Yes. What happened? J Mr. Jack Dale, Mr. Sue come back and let him marry up. He's how come you don't know he's here? <laughs> Guys, like I said, I don't know if Sue was involved in Baishanlin fiasco in this country. But you guys don't want to know how many gold fields and forest concessions was handed to Bai Shen Lin on a silver platter in this country under Jack Dale presidency. You don't want to know. Man, Joshua, had Jack Dale them win the 2015 election, Guyana would have been renamed Bai Shen Lin Guyana. The government of the day went so far to give Bai Shen Lin. Bai Shen Lin. Over. Over Joshua. A quarter of Guyana, brother. You hear me, Josh? Yeah. Over a quarter of Guyana. Yeah, man. That is what the PPP government and the Jack Deo give Bai Shen Lin. You didn't hear what I said, eh, man. A quarter of Guyana forest was placed in the lap of Bai Shen Lin. You guys have the picture there? Put the picture up on the screen. Yes. The stories were carried in Kaicho News many, many times. Is the PNC had to come in and take back a big portion of Guyana from Bai Shen Lin. I chartered a helicopter. Cousin, Glen Lal chartered a helicopter. Paid almost $2 million from my pocket. Man, 
you got to see. Not a blade of grass you could see on the ground with how clean the Chinese was cleaning up the forest. It's online there. Put up the pictures, let them see it. The size of some of the lumbers, when I stand up alongside it, I look like a dwarf. Although I'm 5 feet 5 inches or 5 feet 6 inches. Thank David Granger, he come in and run, and run them out and take away, take away back some of them land. Even the mall they were, they, were, they were building next to the Chinese embassy was on a hole under the PNC. If I come to town, I would see people in Georgia would know the mall, how long did they park up under the PNC. Jack, they will come back in. The mall near complete. You guys don't have a clue. What a mall is going to do with the local business of this country. You talk about putting out jobs. Putting 900 people out of jobs, Jack Dale. When they open up that business, they can put out the entire country out of business. We carried a story recently where all the embassies together, all the embassies together couldn't match the amount of containers. The Chinese embassy alone was bringing in into this country. You guys think it's personal things coming in? Uh -uh. It's goods they're bringing in. Not paying any duty. Coming under the diplomatic ban. How can the Guyanese business people compete with them? When they're not paying no duties. Guys, it's the exact thing they do throughout Africa. In Ghana at present, their business people not getting visa to go to China anymore. They got to buy from the Chinese. They got to buy the Chinese goods right there in Ghana from the Chinese to sell back to their people. PPP come back in office and the mall near finish is Ghana all over in Guyana where every business owner will be refused a visa to China and will be forced to go to the same mall and place their order to buy directly from the mall they will take over all the business everything they're grabbing up when it's not your land and your wealth <laughs> is your business sector too. Barra Jack Dale telling me I'm a madman. Because if I am really to get down to the bottom of these things, it will take me a lifetime to tell you all the dirty, stinking and underhand deals that was going on in this country. And it started, it started back again with Jack Dale at the helm. I don't know if Mr. Sue got anything to do with that though. <laughs> the same Sue was Jack Dale said he can sue. Guys, all of you sleeping and watching how men dressing with suits. And I believe they just come from church. Is nothing more than sellouts in this land y'all have for leaders. Most of them. Most of them. And Barra Jack Dale is leading that gang. He never promised to do investigation on the culture and kanji oil blocks. What happened? Who owned it? Anyone I know? That is the mother of all sellouts, Uncle Nanti. The oil blocks that worth billions of US dollars that could have sell in the open market and pay out all Guyana debts. Triple people's salaries. What am I said I do? Give it away. Yes, they said I give it away free. So they want me and you to believe. Kaicho News carry a story 
when we asked the two owners whose name the oil blocks land in. You guys remember? One of them said, he driving, a driving. Not nice, not nice. Not hearing good. And the other one told the reporter, it's too long. I can't remember. You own an oil block in which you and ten of your generations to come life set. And you can't hear good. <laughs> and the other one can't remember. Cousin, when you expose these things, you are a mental case. You're a madman. I never mentioned this before. But you guys know the reason why Barra Jack Dale can't touch eggs on mobile or axe eggs on mobile anything? It's the same two oil blocks. Kaichor and Kanji. Read through the lines. And let me ask Barra Jack Dale again. And I want all of you to ask him this simple question. Who are the beneficial owners of those two oil blocks. Who really get the billions from ExxonMobil and the other oil companies that buy over the two oil blocks? That should be a simple question. Who get the money? You guys can ask that. Ask President Ali too. Because he's the president. And they promised an investigation to find out who are the beneficial owners. Oh, cousin, I am trying to put my hand on a document for the longest while now. I was told when ExxonMobil gave back Guyana the Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks, they had offered to buy it back from Guyana. Why Bara Jagde, Robert Prasad, and Ashni Singh and the PPP government didn't sell it to them so that the people of Guyana could have received the money? <laughs> no, no. Them take it and put it in private hands so that them can, them can sell it and make money for them and their families. You guys remember, man? When Robert Prasad was asked who the oil blocks went to, what he said? He don't know. He never meet or see the owners. He only signed the documents with the lawyers who representing the owners or signed behalf of the owners. And when he was asked who were the lawyers, he said he can't remember them. <laughs> this whole country, every citizen should have been on the streets for what is happening in this land. Everybody should be on the streets for what's going on in this land. But, y'all choose to stay home and stay quiet. And some of you just buy in to, to talks like that. This is Guyana. Beautiful Guyana. You say it's independent and free? Yeah. Hmm. Free for one set of people. The 48 minutes he rant and rave about Glen Lal and the Kaicho News, I will play the whole tape after this program. So they can't accuse me of cutting and pacing anything and taking anything out of context. Let me end the program here by taking two or three telephone calls. After which, uncle, the whole tape will be played of what you heard part of just now. I am throwing out a paid program just to play his full speech that he sat down with a clung after he came back from India. And I want you to listen carefully. I don't want this tit for tat to go on. Joshua, I don't want this tit for tat to go on. There is much more at stake that I have to focus on. What pass, pass. 
were gone, gone. I think they're baiting me to get into a tit for tat, to sidetrack me from dealing with the main issues that's going on presently. They hired a whole team to come after me, but I will not be moved or sidetracked by the obstacles and by now, all of you Guyanese people beginning to see the games and the tricks they have up their sleeves. Yes. So, let's not be distracted. Gold, gold, timber, timber, bauxite, bauxite, diamond, diamond, manganese. Now oil, oil, oil are all being depleted. All are being huffed out, even to when we are sleeping. The Chinese doing it in Ghana in the nights now. I told you guys, when the police and the army run them in the day, the Chinese sleeping. As soon as their back turn is into the mineral fields, the Chinese gone. We in trouble here, uncle. We in trouble here, auntie. We are in terrible trouble here, cause. And our leaders are mentally ill or mentally corrupt. Guys, always remember what that wise man once said. The most beautiful of all creations is a well-educated person. A smart person fights with passion, but a fool becomes his own slave. Anyone that can make you angry becomes your master. <laughs> That's where I put Jagdeo and President Ali. They are angry, very angry. So it's clear that Glenn Lal has become their master. I love it, Joshua. <laughs> Bara Jagdeo said, me can't change. You heard him, right? He said, me can't change. And you will hear him back. You will hear the full, full tape. He fully well know a million like he can't change Glenn Lal. Can't change Glenn Lal and my stance where corruption, incompetence, and wholesale thievery of the citizens of this country's wealth is concerned. Sorry to say this, Mr. Jagdale. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. The creator made me that way. I wish I could have been one of your friends. Like how critic move away from me and turn your best friend. I would have probably get a whole aisle black. God bless both of you too. <laughs> and God bless you guys cause. Have a great weekend.